You know, it's rare that someone gets to meet someone who literally they grew up with, who 30, 40 years later, looks the same, actually better, than they did when you met them during your childhood. That person is in front of me today, our very special guest, Julie Newmar. Oh, David, thank you so much. Lovely it's to see you. To be now, and I really do mean that seriously. I grew up watching you as the original Catwoman on Batman. I know, you wore a towel around your and you jumped off, not the roof, I The hope. couch. The, co the couch. The couch. Yes. Now, you just outed me because right. I didn't think anybody had seen me do that. You didn't tell your mother. No, no. I was trying to do it, you know, but you were looking out of the TV at me. I was. I think so. I do that. <laughs> I remember meeting you a few years ago with your brother, John brother Newmeyer, John. who lives here, and you were just beginning to write a series of books about cats. I want to know, did, the, did your love and fascination with cats begin before you became the iconic cat woman in the original Batman TV series or after? Well, I didn't really write a book about cats. You'll have to leave that up to my brother. But I wrote a book and called it, what's the name of my book? Something about cats. It was the one of the early ones. The Conscious Cat Woman. That's it. Explains Life on Earth. Yes. So you're right. It is a little tongue in cheek. And it is about, well, I, I'm wearing cat ears. And they're, it's very cat-like. It's very cat-like. Yes, it is. But now, was this love and fascination of cats something that, uh, I mean, I know many no. people call you still the cat woman because of, obviously, the connection to your role on Batman, but you're a lover of, of animals and cats, and I know your brother is. Actually, I like plants better. Uh-huh. Easier to take care of? No, I can talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you talk to your dog? That, never mind. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't know anything about cats when I did the role, and I lived in New York. And I used to go to the actor's studio, and right next to the actor's studio, June Havoc lived. And she's the sister of Gypsy Rose Lee, and she would rescue animals. And she gave me two cats, and I lived with them and learned from them and behaved. You know, cats, these, they have a certain kind of personality that is like them. Nothing else. They're cats. Mm -hmm. And so you were this adopter of mm -hmm. Gypsy Rose Lee's sister's cat. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a yes. great lead-in. Yes. And then you hear about this role in a new TV series called Batman, which I understand you had never heard of. No. And they came to you and said, we have this character called Catwoman. We want you to create it. What did you think? Well, they give you the script first, and the script was brilliant. It was so easy to do. It's when you just put your makeup on, put your costume on, and walk on stage and, and say the lines. And it becomes so popular as it has after, what now, 45 years. Mm -hmm. And so many copies and so many renditions of it, which is a very good thing. It's good to have all these different versions and have many people play the part. Because I kind of think of it like uh, Carmen. I mean, there isn't just one soprano to sing Carmen. Mm -hmm. Actually, is she a soprano? Anyway, there's lots, and it'll go on. It'll go on beyond me, and the next 100, 200 years. It'll... Yes, well, there may be many Carmens, and there may be many cat women, but you were the first. You created the role. I mean, do you correct me if I'm wrong, but yes. I can't imagine that Haley Berry or some of these other people haven't come to you or looked at your rendition and saying, that's the, that's the real character. I have to get close to that. Have they? It was a fun time in the 60s. We probably had more fun. I think the 70s it got darker and darker and, and very dark. So um, it changes the look of the story because uh, you're not repeating it as it is. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing that we see these things, that it goes through these changes and that the characters is, there's so many facets to this female. Mm -hmm. You know, she isn't just good. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Catwoman's personality is, is a real paradox. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, what is her relationship with Bruce Wayne versus Batman? What is her relationship to good versus evil? She's very cat-like. And what is my relationship to Adam West and all that sort of thing? Yeah. <laughs> People ask. What is your nature? We're very good friends. Uh-huh. 
saw him only two weeks ago. At the do you ever sit down and talk about those days? I mean, there must have been a lot of fun things on the set. People do for us, and we're always asked about it, and it it is a joy, and I'm so glad that it left the kind of impression that it did on people because it's a it's a picker upper. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a fun show. Very, very, very much. Do you think, looking back on that era in TV, the 1960s, with shows like Batman and Bewitched and some of the others that have become iconic, that it was a simpler, more innocent time? Or, or were those wonderful, positive shows a reaction to things like the civil rights struggles and Vietnam hmm. and, and women's liberation? Uh, yes, the times color what we're doing and how we behave and how we act and what entertainment looks like, which is the mirror to society. Shouldn't always blame the actors. <laughs> the hell they can. Uh, and uh, what was the other question? Well, was it a reflection of the times? Yes. Or, and uh, yes. was it also a way to, you know, have some diversion from some very serious issues, the war and civil rights and all that kind of thing? Exactly. 1968 was when it uh, really took hold of us. And mm -hmm. then, uh, I guess I remember being invited to, to Chicago, to the convention, because of, I, with my brother, was, uh, we were, we were pretty political in those times. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, you were invited to the 1968 Democratic Convention, which has gone yes. down as not one of the more successful conventions. Oh, I so wanted to be there. And I was at 20th Century Fox doing a pilot, something that was three on a match or some silly dilly, girly, cutie pie show that didn't become a show. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think I would rather have been at history. Yeah, but now you and your brother have always been very political. Do you consider yourself more or less political than you were back then? I consider myself thinking, my brothers, well, we are both political. Well, he ran for Congress mm -hmm. as a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He ran against an incumbent, I think a five-time incumbent. He did very well. Yeah. I'm very proud of it. Yeah. Does it ever bother you when people say to you or see you or meet you for the first time and say, oh my God, of course, you were the original Catwoman. Do you ever say, you know, I've done lots of other things. I've done TV, I've done stage, I was a classical <laughs> pianist, I was a ballerina, mm -hmm. I'm a writer. You know, could you please think of me as something other than Catwoman? Does it bug you? Isn't it wonderful to be acknowledged for anything? And you know what? Actors are remembered usually for one role. In Laurence Olivier, you probably think of him as Hamlet. Or mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Or Leonard Nimoy as Mr. Spock. Yeah. A a everything is, is a challenge, and uh, it's something you love to do, and sometimes it never sees the light of day. Right. And, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about how you got into entertainment, because we're here to celebrate something that I find incredible, seeing you sitting here in front of me, your silver anniversary of being entertainment, uh, your 60th year. So the math doesn't work for me, but I'll just accept it because I've read the news release. Did you ever think that you would have a career that long and that iconic? 60 years in show business. No, I don't think numbers. My brother put you up to it, you know. <laughs> he created this idea of a silver, you know, I think of the queen going up the Thames on a barge, and that's good enough for her, but... 60th anything, that is something. Mm -hmm. mm. And do you remember the first inkling of, I want to be on stage or? Oh, yes. I was seven years old, uh, and it was a department store. Mm -hmm. With the Broadway department store, the Hollywood Broadway department store in Hollywood and Vine. And I was Alice in Alice in Wonderland. And I walked through the mirror, and it fell on me. <laughs> Oh. And you were hooked? Well, my mother was in the Ziegfeld Follies, so her career was unfinished. And I'm sure I picked the right parents. Because it worked. My uh, mother's gave me all the dance lessons, and I later took singing. I even studied opera for eight years. Well, I saw that you, you, uh, you studied opera, mm -hmm. uh, you studied dance. Yes. If, if I'm not mistaken, your first role on the boards, as they say, the legitimate stage, was as the ballerina in, in pink stockings. Um, silk stockings. Silk stockings. So I, you were 
you were already a very diverse actress and performer, but everything I've read about your career says that you want to be known for being a comedian. Was it hard with legs like that and uh, that amazing well, figure? Well, Ball did it. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. You know, it's a lot easier to do comedy, although they say the opposite. You, because comedy, you just, it's, it's the timing. You have to have the timing to do comedy. And um, hmm. I studied mime, too, with um, Etienne Ducroux. He was the teacher of uh, Marcel Marceau in New York. I had one lesson. <laughs> but it impressed me deeply. And a lot of the pictures that are in my book, The Conscious Catwoman Explains Life on Earth, come from that period when they were always taking these glamorous pictures of me and you get tired of doing the same thing all the time. So I said to the photographer, I want to have some fun now. I'm not going to do these pictures unless you let me have fun. So I had, I had gone downstairs without telling him and I got a clown outfit, kind of Charlie Chaplin-esque. And I put it on and he, and he shot these pictures of me. They turned out to be my favorites and they're they're, uh, they're in the book, and uh, I love them. So did you ever feel stereotyped as, oh, this is Julie Newmar with the legs up to heaven and the hair and the figure? And Because Marilyn Monroe always talked about that. She always said, I wanted to be considered a serious actress. Did you have that problem? People said, I'm casting Julie because she's flat out gorgeous. That's echoing in my ears, <laughs> but, and it's a thank you, but you, you have to be something. Yes, you can be everything, but you're known as something. People ascribe qualities to you. They remember you in hopefully happy ways. I hope so. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to bring joy to an audience. You want to... You want to make them feel good. And however that's dressed, or how, whatever the lines are, or whatever the me medium is, that's, I go to the theater because I, I want to be changed. I want to be affected. I want to have feelings that I probably don't completely allow myself to have. You know, you got to be a good girl on time, ready for this, and serious. And sometimes you don't give yourself. You're not generous, generous enough. So the theater allows you to cry in a in a dark space, and to remember something and release it. Mm -hmm. We've been speaking with Julie Newmar, who's talking about the special quality of the stage. We're going to continue our conversation with Julie in just a moment, talk to her about her stage work, her movie work, and a film that's become iconic, Tu Wong Fu, Julie Newmar. We'll be right back. So nowhere to go, nothing to do? Well, that's simply not true. Here in Northern California, there are plenty of places to explore, and on Inside City Limits, we'll show you the best of the arts and entertainment. I'll take you to museums, the theater, dance performances, restaurants, and all kinds of great entertainment throughout Northern California. So join me, Katie Rice Jones, on Inside City Limits, Monday through Friday on Comcast Hometown Network, Channel 104. What does it call it? The Pop and Lock. Oh, wonderful. Uh, dude. Hey. Date night. I'm in the middle of something here. Sorry. Thanks. You and me and me and With Skype on Xfinity, you it's like you're there. Now make video calls right from your TV. There are two new ladies in town. They're sophisticated. They're glamorous. They're Lady Brain. 
don't miss Steph and Lauren on their new show every Saturday night at 10 p.m. on Comcast Hometown Network, Channel 104. And welcome back. I'm David Perry, your host for 10% with our very special guest tonight, the one and only Julie Newmar. Did it bug you when I said the iconic Julie Newmar? Do you really believe that, that you are a, um, a screen TV icon? I mean, it's true, whether you believe it or not. Oh, I used to think they were dead people. But, no, I like that. Uh -huh. Iconic, is, that's, it's fitting. Yeah. I remember when the film Tu Wong Fu with Love, Julie Newmar came out. To uh, to Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Sorry, th I appreciate the correction. Long time. And I remember huh? that when that came out, mm. I remember thinking this film is going to be an utter flop. And it came uh, out wonderfully. It and was good. It was, delicious. it was delicious. And the whole premise of the movie is this group of uh, drag queens in New York make their way across country, and they have a picture view that I believe it's from Sardi's or one of the restaurants in New yes, York. Yes, yes. And one of the actors, I believe it's John Leguizamo's character, says no, this is the ideal it's Patrick sorry Swayze Patrick Swayze he takes it he looks at it what does he say well i you're correct me but something that this is every you drag queen's are, ideal and they all write into you and tell you yes <laughs> i going to have a question for you all right even though they did a fabulous job and i must say they're wonderful do you think those roles should have been played by gay actors Oh, my goodness, that's a hard question for a former actor. No, not necessarily so. I think that uh, straight actors have been playing gay people for a long time, and now we have openly gay people playing uh, straight people. Uh, you even have former Southerners having their own gay TV show. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's a low threshold. No, I don't necessarily think so. I, and I have to admit that I thought that uh, they were all just deliciously they were good. gay. I didn't, I didn't feel made fun of as a gay no, man. No, they did a very good job. Yeah. I played an Indian once an Apache, which are very fiery, uh, the Swede, blonde hair, well, I had the brown eyes, mm -hmm. of course, I wore a wig. I was pretty good. I bet you were. For a Hollywood actress. How did you feel doing this film, though, Too Wong Fu? Was it, I mean, were you there for the <gasps> shooting, or was it just that one, that last shot? I think it was Steven Spielberg's after shot, after thought of my just making an appearance, and I crowned Leguizamo there at the end of it, and it was, uh, and got to wear a Cherry Mugler $70,000 black lace dress. It was hot. Which later got stolen and ended up in Watts. You're kidding. When did it get stolen? During <laughs> they the filming? It. They it's, yes. Uh -huh. But it was very difficult because we had 14 fittings. It would keep pulling apart. You know, lace. It, uh, this, that. But never mind. That was... Even though, according My to... walk-on. Yeah. Well, it was more than a walk-on. I mean, you were the theme of the that movie. That was a walk-on. All right, a walk-on. It was walk -on. a walk-on. <laughs> With uh, Patrick Swayze saying, oh, well, you know, that character, Julie Newmar, back then in that wonderful photo, uh, was what drag performers aspire to. Did that do something for you within the LGBT community? Did you suddenly yeah. found a whole other fan base? Oh, yes. Oh, and thank goodness my brother's gay. Because I wouldn't have had the, the ear to understand and I have the sympathy because I'm I, I do love all people. I'm very we we're Nord we're Swedish, German background, English and so we have an egalitarian kind of feel about people. But no, they've taught me a lot. Uh huh. Oh my. So do you do you still get fan mail? Oh, oh good gosh, yes. And more, do you, do you, more than ever. More than ever. And how do you handle it? Do you have someone that helps you with it? Do you try to answer all the fan mail? No. You know where I spend my time now? On the computer. All my work, the photographs, uh, my writing, communication. JulieNumarWrites.com, uh, right? I have two yeah. websites, yes. Yeah. And uh, now I, for, for the fun of it, I play around on Facebook. And I can friend Julie Newmar on Facebook? Yes. But it's very interesting what you get back on Facebook. It's not the, or just the fluff you think it is. You can make it into anything you want. Uh-huh. And, what, and what, have you, what have you made it into? It's, it's, an, it's a kind of an ongoing process that I'm learning, you, you know. It's all about what's happening now, being current, and, and what's about to happen. That in, gives me enthusiasm because I think that's what 
keeps the youth in your life. You know, you, you, want to, you want to know about now and what's happening, what's happening, mm -hmm. what's happening. So you didn't have to be dragged into the Facebook generation. No, I'm, uh, I'm a right brain person, so everything I see is, is visual. And uh, I work with a left brain person. Well, he's both, really. Pablo, he's marvelous. He helps Mount put all the pictures up, put them up. We do films and videos and all kinds of things. It's a playground, and you don't know where it's going. It's, 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 an, it's an investment that uh, brings its rewards because it's meaty. Uh, it challenges you. What, I mean, what is the future going to tell us? This brilliant article by Deepak Chopra about why uh, the Middle East is connecting much faster than we know, because all those cell phones and people talking when they're having... All this going on is just so amazing, the world we live in now. Mm -hmm. Any regrets in your life? No. No regrets. No regrets. You, I wouldn't think of it for a second. Uh -huh. no. Proud of your son? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Is he, it hard being cat My son, son? Is, is handicapped, if any of you don't know. Yes. But he is the source of my real knowledge of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Because you've become, because of your relationship with your son, I become a hero to the uh -huh. uh, uh, disabled community. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear from some more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's why I can see the genius in everyone or what they value most. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. ah, it's nice, isn't it? Mm. Well, we see ourselves through our, our children. Our children teach us. Uh -huh. We think we want one thing, we get something else, and they're so wise. Right. Oh, my goodness. And my son doesn't talk, you know. Mm -hmm. no. He can't tell me how he feels. But you know. How do you communicate with him? I learned. I intuit. I listen. I watch. And so I can see right through people, situations, conditions, liars, politicians, everything. So Catwoman is psychic. Two years ago, I predicted that Obama would win by six points, and I thought, oh, you're such a jerk. You don't know anything about numbers. And funnily, uh, you know, interestingly enough, the, the, that's where it's it looks like it's going. back that way, isn't it? Well, a lot of us hope that you're psychic. Very you. pleasurable meeting you. Best to you and your is son. This is the end? This is the end. Is the we'll end. have you back, I promise, Aww. for your 65th anniversary. Thank you. We've been speaking with the timeless and iconic Julie Newmar. I'm David Perry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on 10%.